now a word from our pastor, Bishop Charles Ellis III. Listen, I'm bringing to you the conclusion of a message that I preached a few weeks ago entitled, Hold On to Your Promise. You know, many times God speaks something into our spirit and we expect it to happen right away. And because many times there's a duration between the promise of God and the manifestation of the promise, sometimes we fall by the wayside and begin to, begin to doubt that God has really spoken that word. And add insult into injury, the devil comes in and says, God didn't speak anything to you. And we start listening to the voice of the devil and we start following his voice and not the voice of God. And then the promise never comes to pass. Listen, if you hold on and wait on God, I don't care how bad it gets, how dire it gets. If you hold on and wait, what he has spoken will come to fruition and nobody can stop it. But you've got to maintain your faith and hold on to your promise. That's the message on the day. Call a neighbor and a friend. Let them know the Bishop Ellis is on the air. Now let's go into the service already in progress and I'll be back in just a few minutes. His promise. Uh, he had every right to say, I tried to work with you, uh, but you tried to do it your own way. Now let me find somebody else. Uh, but aren't you glad that he is a God of another chance? So God goes back to Abram and Sarah. Yeah, and God now renews his promise. And he renews his covenant with them. And now by this time, they are 99 and 89. So now by this time, Abram and Sarai, they are afraid. They are hiding because they made a mess out of the promise of God. Because they couldn't wait on God to do it in his own season and in his own time. So God sends the angel of the Lord to the tent of Abraham. And God changes his name from Abram to Abraham. And from Sarai to Sarah. Because sometimes God needs to give us a brand new identity. Because sometimes God needs to make all things a brand new in our lives so God says to Abram that I'm going to fulfill my promise with you and your wife the Bible says that Sarai is listening in the tent door she hears the angel of the Lord speaking with Abram and now she declares that this has got to be a joke and she starts laughing uncontrollably because if God didn't do it at 65 then ain't no way in heaven he's going to do it at 89 but God says not only am I going to do it at 89 I'm going to let you have the child at 90 years old and your husband will be 10 years your senior the Bible declares when Abram declared that God was going to do this thing and pondering in his mind and wondering what God could do and how in the world could God fulfill something almost 25 years later when he didn't do it 25 years ago now comes the call and the cry that prophetically speaks to us today when he declares is there anything to hard for God I thank God for that scripture because that scripture lets me to know today that if God is the same yesterday today and forever that if Abraham and Sarah thought that it was way past time and that it was way past due for God to work and God still worked then there ought not be 
nothing from me holding on to the promise of God and believing what God said he is able to do it and to perform it put your hands together and give God a praise so then we see at a hundred and ninety years of age that God brings a bouncing boy by the name of Isaac if you please and now Sarah that was laughing and she was mocking God before now she is laughing with joy because the promise of God has now been fulfilled in her life and I come to tell somebody here this morning that God many times gives us a word and God gives us a promise and we're all happy about the word and we're excited about the promise but then during the waiting period our happiness begins to decline and our excitement begins to decrease and then we begin to let doubt and fear creep in and now we were once telling everybody that God is going to do this and God is going to do that but now the time has passed and we ain't seen no hair nor sign of the promise of God being fulfilled and now we begin to change our confession and say well I kind of hope God does it I kind of think God is going to do it and then a few more days and months and years passed and now our confession begins to be one of doubt and say maybe I got it wrong I thought I heard from God but I must have been mistaken but I'm here to tell somebody that when you got a word from God and when you know his word has been confirmed in the Holy Bible ain't nothing for you to do but to hold on to your promise and to believe that God is able to bring that thing to pass do I have anybody in here that need a word from the Lord do I have somebody in here that's got a word from God well God just told me to encourage you this morning and to let you know that if you can hold on to your profession of faith that he is faithful that has made you the promise we've got all kind of experiences in the Bible where we see God fulfilling his promise don't you love the story of the Hebrew boy named Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they said oh king we are not even careful to answer you because the God we serve he is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace and if he don't he's still able the Bible said that Nebuchadnezzar he heated up the furnace seven times hotter but the boys went down there with their profession of faith and the Bible said they didn't even have to get pushed in they just stood at the door and fell on in because they had enough faith to believe that if God don't deliver us he's going to fireproof us and y'all know the story the men that threw him in got consumed and God is going to do that but now the time has passed and we ain't seen no hair nor sign of the promise of God being fulfilled and now we begin to change our confession and say well I kind of hope God does it I kind of think God is going to do it and then a few more days and months and years passed and now our confession begins to be one of doubt and say maybe I got it wrong I thought I heard from God but I must have been mistaken but I'm here to tell somebody that when you got a word from God and when you know his word has been confirmed in the Holy Bible ain't nothing for you to do but to hold on to your promise and to believe that God is able 
pass? To bring that thing to pass? Do I have anybody in here that need a word from the Lord? Do I have somebody in here that's got a word from God? Well, God just told me to encourage you this morning and to let you know that if you can hold on to your profession of faith, that he is faithful 